Fora TV. The world is thinking. We have a false narrative of history. We're told this constant refrain, Iran, 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 the mad mullahs with the black turbans and this crackpot Ahmadinejad, he is a crackpot, by the way, want to have a bomb and destroy Israel and, of course, destroy all the Palestinians and then Iran will be destroyed, etc. The narrative that is laid down by our presidents and our generals and our prime ministers and, I'm afraid, our journalists and by Tom Friedman is a narrative in which part of the beginning of it is snapped off and thrown away. What is the real story of Iranian nuclear power? It starts with the Shah of Iran, our friend, the policeman in the Gulf, the King of Kings. He wanted nuclear facilities in Iran. And the Europeans stood on each other's shoulders to bid for contracts for nuclear facilities. The big um, nuclear station at Boucher, such a threat to us now apparently, was built by Siemens, the German company. And when the Shah came to New York on his way for a big bear hug from Carter on the White House lawn, he gave an interview on TV in New York, in which he said, I'd like to have the atom bomb for Iran. And when asked why, not in any hostile way, of course, he said, well, the Soviets have got one, the Americans have got one, why shouldn't Iran? And I was present after the Islamic Revolution when Khomeini had returned to Tehran, to Iran, and he spoke in Tehran in a room about five size, times the size of this, and I heard him say, in the same room, he said, nuclear facilities are the work of the devil and we shall close them down, and the Iranians closed them down. Then came the Iran-Iraq war, and by 1984, Saddam, who had invaded, of course, with our encouragement and military assistance, began to soak the Iranian frontline trenches in gas, of which some of the components came from the United States and, of course, from Germany. At which point, the Iranian military went to Khomeini and said, he's using weapons, Saddam is using weapons of mass destruction, he'll use nuclear weapons next, we've got to reopen the facilities, and Khomeini reluctantly did so. That is the first part of the story which has been chopped off and thrown away. We have to start the narrative of Iran with the mad mullahs wanting a bomb. So you see, this is one of the problems that you keep having to say. I mean, you can't, I can't do interviews with American television because you don't get enough time to explain this. You've got to go with their narrative. Well, will we bomb Iran? Well, will we? Um, I'll tell a sobering story. I believe we will not. Uh, that's why I think the senior officers in the Pentagon went to see uh, the commanders of the Israeli army at the Ministry of Defense in Tel Aviv, it's in Tel Aviv, not Jerusalem, in Israel, and tell the Israelis, if you bomb Iran, you're on your own, because it is quite clear to me, and when I speak to U.S. Uh, servicemen, senior servicemen, America is overcommitted. It cannot take on a third war, which is interesting because we've got Pakistan coming up, <laughs> or Iraqistan, as I now call the area between uh, Baghdad and <laughs> Islamabad. Um, but Seymour Hirsch tells us there will be attacks on Iran. Uh, Seymour Hirsch is an old friend of mine. I admire him enormously. God bless him for American journalists. You don't have many great ones like Seymour Hirsch. And Cy Hirsch says to me, Robert, he said, you say there's not going to be an attack on Iran. Right. I said there will be. Right. He said, do I remember back in 2002, you told me the Americans weren't going to invade Iraq? And I said, yes, <laughs> I did. He said, and what did I tell you? I said, you said they would. He said, there you go. Um, I don't know if, I don't think we are going to attack Iran, but whether Israel will, I don't think so, but it's possible. And I'll give you an example of the degree to which this is taken seriously. The Emir of Qatar, and I know this is a fact because I was in Qatar three weeks ago talking to his friends, the Emir of Qatar has actually told the Americans that he wants to give them more land on the huge American base in Qatar the largest base the Americans have in the Middle East, on the other side from Doha, and we'd like some of the land back, which is closest to the capital city. Because, you see, if the Iranians start firing missiles at the Americans, which they will if they're attacked by either the Americans or the Israelis, the Emir of Qatar does not want them falling on Doha. But that is exactly the detail to which people take this seriously out in the Middle East. Um, as I say, I don't think we're going to do that. And I bloody well hope not, because every...